Hey, yo, what's good? What's good? What's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the role podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got Jamie the Great here. Yeah. Shout to Big Never, Never Forever. Yes. We have a special co host here. We got my man, Marco Pinta, in the building. What up, what up? What's good? <laughs> and we have this this DJ I have here as a guest today. You know, I've been wanting him on the podcast for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever you come to New York, you know, you'll probably see him out and about DJing in the club. He works probably eight nights a week. <laughs> Uh, you know, he basically sleeps there. You know, he he's always working. I don't, you know, he's stacking all these gigs. He's at every hot club when ever, and you know, he's the most likable, humble DJ. Sweet. I would say, on the East Coast, he is the most likable DJ on the East Coast, and I could be wrong. And then I think you know, the West Coast is maybe DJ Spider. I don't know. It's between these two <laughs> on who's the more likable. And we and we hang out actually every so often. <laughs> who's the nicest? <laughs> We're nationally the most liked, the most humble liked DJs. Yeah. They're and humble I, And honestly, whenever I go out of town, anywhere I go, it could be Texas, it could be you know, you know, anywhere I go. They'll be like, oh, you know Neil Jackson? I'll be like, yes, yep. I know Neil Jackson. <laughs> and that's what we have today. We have Neil Jackson in the building. What's good? Hey. The peacemaker. What's Dude, good, I'm fam? I'm, man, I'm nervous, to be honest. Really? I am. I am. You, I you're, really you am. have your own podcast. Yeah, you have you're your own like podcast. a, you know, you do like, a, you do all these things on social media. You speak to the people. But I feel like. You sell you coffee. Guys, you guys have an official podcast. We just have like a, a few dudes. You have a group chat? Hey, yo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, yo. A few oh, dudes. And, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad to have you here. We could yeah. talk about it you know I, we were doing research on you and i didn't know right i didn't know you're from la i am but i always sensed there was something weird about you <laughs> <laughs> what in what way kirk because you know, he, he doesn't have a new york energy no but he knows new york lingo you feel really me well. yeah of course uh, but it, you know the crazy thing is is you moved you moved out of new york the same time i moved to new york almost the same uh, year no 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 i well it says that you moved in 2002 yeah when did you move? I moved in like 2006. 05. Yeah, like end of uh, 05. Okay. Yeah, but I don't I don't I was know. still trying to get my bearings when I moved. Here. I didn't know where you DJ'd. Yeah, I didn't like I didn't hear about you until I came back. Yeah, at that time I wasn't I actually wasn't DJing cuz that was around the same time that Serato wasn't out yet. So yeah. when I moved to New York it was just cuz I just needed to change. Were you ever on vinyl? Did you DJ yeah. vinyl? I DJed since uh, the 8th grade. Okay. So I DJed even before before my vinyl days was a tape deck and a CD player. On I always thought like yeah, I was like, yeah, I always thought of you as a New York like DJ a New York dude, and oh. then I was just but something was like off. I was like, he doesn't seem it doesn't click like a New York. Yeah, he's just way too <laughs> too nice. Yeah, he's just too right. like chill. Like he has that Cali West Coast chill factor. Yeah, yeah. But now I know why. Yeah, now no, I know why. My <laughs> <laughs> now, now I know what's wrong Surprise. with you. <laughs> I knew there was something off. Now but you I know why he's like Spider. You're like, ah, oh, kind of clear. Well, I was, I was doing research. And I was telling Jamie, I'm like, oh, this guy's like that. What do you call those dudes that like switch over the gangs? They're like, they're oh, hood blood hopper. and they're, yeah, he's a hood hopper. You know, you know? The, the, the crazy thing is, is uh, I grew up in Pomona, California. And, Oof. P Town. The, yeah. All the Mexicans are there. Dude. What is your background? Yeah, we had all gangs. We had all gangs. But the uh. thing was, is for me, I was always the music kid. And all the kids that we grew up with all turned into gangs. And so I was the one who had the past that was able to move. Yeah, he was the one that would walk down. I the could street. move without having, uh, without having. Yeah, don't fuck with Neil. He's gonna be somewhere. <laughs> he gonna go to college out this little music yeah, show. He's, he's protected. This he's music protected. thing is gonna get yeah, him out of yeah. here, and that's exactly don't fuck what with it Neil, did. Dog. Let Neil walk by. You he's know, like right. limits. Hey, man, he's cool, man. That's Neil Jackson, man. <laughs> the little boy said, "Man, I did everybody's cookouts. I did everybody's house parties. I did all of that." He's the kid with it. Not the only kid with the guitar, bro. Just let him be, dog. <laughs> let him walk by. Wait, so where did you get this? I don't know. This really kind of laid back. Everything's low. Like, California, like, you know. here, bro. No, 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 no. Like, is it from your parents, your moms? Your, it, your... it was from my mom. Yeah. My mom was always the peacekeeper amongst our household. Wait, what's she your nationality? Always... I'm sorry. So I'm black, Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese. Wow. Oh, mixture. Yeah. What were you raised uh, like predominantly as? Is there like a dominant. You yeah, know, that's the thing. My my parents kind of just. It was a blend. Yeah. Okay. Usually, like, if they're divorced, you, yeah, you're like raised mom, one way, yeah. right? Like yeah, one side a little bit. No, no, the no. Other. They were. Wait. So, which? What was your mom and what was your dad? My mom was Hawaiian, Chinese, Japanese okay. from Hawaii. Right. Moved to moved to San Francisco when she 
graduated high school. Dad's from Chicago and then moved out, and they met at a party in South Central L.A. Bro, South a lot Central. of like, yeah. like dudes from Chicago moved to L.A. Yeah. Like, it's some thing. I don't know. It it's, happens it's, in the 80s. And it's that. called the winter. Oh, yeah. They, <laughs> they realize that the winter in California is way different than the winter in Chicago. Yeah. Never went back. <laughs> I get it. Chicago's the worst. Yeah. Oh, my Chicago's God. the worst. And as we speak, it's snowing here in New York. Yes. Snowing and raining. Yeah. Jamie has never experienced I've never like experienced snow. snow like this, gentlemen. Yeah. I could tell because you're wearing New Balance. Yes. <laughs> I was trying to be comfortable when I walked out here. I told these motherfuckers, I said, watch. I said, all the guests that come in today are going to wear boots. Yeah, except Marco. Marco, except being, uh, he's bougie. He, he drives, here. bro. <laughs> <laughs> he can actually find parking. I joke. <laughs> All right, so you grew up in Pomona. Yeah. And then you were kind of DJing along the way. I'm sure you did like probably high school dances. You did like college shit out there or, or what, what happened? So the, my very first gig was my eighth grade prom. And right. from there, uh, at that summer, Juice came out. Right. I didn't know what DJing was. Juice came out. I snuck into the movie theater maybe about... 10 times in a week trying to watch this movie. I was like, that's what I want to do. Mm. You know, I was playing, the eighth grade prom, I was playing from a tape deck, a realistic mixer, and a CD player, like a CD Walkman. Um, Concoction. And then I was like, that's what I want to do. And so I practiced, 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 and then one of my friends' older brother was one of the DJs for like a, a lot of like open mics, like rap battles and stuff. Mm. And so he DJed for like, AC alone. Well, they're they're called they were called Freestyle Fellowship at the time, and he kind of mentored me. So I that's what I did was underground hip hop stuff, and then so you were DJing rap battles in LA. Yeah. Where where at? Well in in Walnut, California. Oh, so okay. I was in the suburbs at the yeah, time. Yeah, he was in the burbs. Where the yeah. fuck is Walnut? Walnut's like Rancho Cucamonga, that the area. Like it's like area. it's more like West Covina. Yeah, mm. it's just a, it's just east of West Covina. Your bio says that you were DJing rap battles hosted by the Far Sign and Black Eyed Peas. Yeah, with Young Will I Am. Yep, <laughs> but they were called uh, they were called At Band Clan at the time. So this is pre Black Eyed Peas. Oh wow! So Will Taboo and all of them they were they were a dance crew. They weren't even really a rap. They were just girls everywhere, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. His boys. Bro. Yeah, yeah. No, no. It was just. A gang of dudes That's dancing you in the circle. That's the way you learn to pick up shorties <laughs> there at those rap battle parties with yep. Black Eyed Peas and Farsight. Yeah, no. There was there was like three girls and like a coffee shop full of dudes yeah, yeah. dancing in circles. Nice. So I just pictured it like 8 Mile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It kind of was, actually. <laughs> it kind of was. Um, but then um, I started doing like radio promotions, like college radio promotions, because mm -hmm. I just wanted to get free records. And that's when I met Vice. So Wait, what radio were you that, on? During always, high school. I've always wondered how you and Vice were connected. Oh, because, we all. Yeah. So when you were asking me about high school dances, like me, Vice, Cheap Shot, like yeah. all of us, we were DJing high school dances and and. House Wait, how did you stuff. know Vice? Vice is from Iraq and you're from Pomona. That's about 30, 40 minutes in difference. So a long time ago, they had a crew called, they still have a crew called DBS. And they were trying to, I found out about a party. What does that stand throwing. for? Yeah, what is DBS? The boys. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of childhood friends. It all comes back to boys, man. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a boys. gang of dudes. <laughs> a gang of dudes. It, it literally is a gang of dudes. <laughs> Fuck girls, man. <laughs> girls suck. Yeah, Keep we didn't. Hater they club. complicate things. No, they. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your girlfriend. Hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so they um, they were throwing a party, and I met him at a party that he was DJing, and I I was promoting records. And my job was to go around to all the local DJs giving out records. Really, it was because I wanted free records. Yeah. He was doing it for MCA, so we just started trading records, and we just became friends from then. Oh, that's cool. Uh, but we were all... They threw the party because they were trying to get free tuxes for their prom. Hmm. So... It, I, we were all trying to work the system. Wow, so you've known Vice and Cheap Shot and all those guys since high school. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, their parents hated me. So were you DJ? <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I you always try to get them to sneak out to go network. I mean, we were trying to get into the club scene at the time. Oh, so you were like the problem child. Yeah, like you would get it. Yeah, the they didn't help you were black. And <laughs> Vice is Mexican, and they're like <laughs> hated me. Jesus Christ! So. Wait, so were you DJing in any spots in LA or in Pomona before you came not, to New York? Not during high. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was. So we got we. Well, I I was in the Asian scene at the time. Mm. So I did the Palace. There was a club called Sky Sushi that doesn't exist anymore. Arena does still. Mm -hmm. 
But arena was around since wait, back then. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, dude. No, no, hold on, hold on, Cricket. There's two arenas. The one on Santa Monica? Yeah. The one the gay club. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. So there's so, two arenas, Cricket. There's one that's a it's pretty big. It's a maybe an acre and there's two clubs. There was circus in the back, which yep. is the gay club, and then the arena was this big like warehouse looking like club. But now arena that you know of that's a different. Uh, oh, that's a different. That's era. a different era of arena. Oh, okay, yes. okay. Yeah, I'm talking about the o, the OG arena. That, that OG thing has been around for but that ever. Was, but that was an Asian club, or no? Well, no, no. So, like the Asian scene would take over clubs yeah, that already exist. They would have their Asian night. Yes. Yeah. Florentine Gardens pal- palaces. I don't know if palaces still palace? open. Florentine it, Gardens. No, still it's open. a club now, but it's it's called something else. It's across the street from the Capitol Building. So like you were playing what? What were you playing like for these Asian? <laughs> it was like <laughs> for these Asian. <laughs> was mainly Filipino or was it? It was mainly Filipino, right? Uh, so like back then it was me, the Beat Junkies, uh, Icy Ice. Oh wow, Ice. Oh, so you're part of that whole scene. That whole scene. Wow. That, that was like, but they. It was basically that was what was running. Beat Junkies was just everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. So. You know, shout out to Ice, Melody, all those dudes. But and and then you know. so like, what what made you want to come to New York? What made you move? That's you know, a big move. That's, yeah. yeah, across the country. I'm like one of those guys that just kind of gets an idea and I just like run with it. But what was the idea? I'm the idea was I used to work in the skateboarding industry. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! And at the time, I had gotten laid off and. For about a year and a half. What were you doing for skateboards? I was doing like marketing. Okay. Like for Globe. Um, I was working for a bunch of. I was interning at Quicksilver. I was interning at a bunch of. She was like, a, you was in the skate scene as well. I was in the streetwear scene, skateboard scene. Mm. Like I was just in the streets. I was in the streets back then. <laughs> so like, wait, that Jonah Hill movie of the mid '90s? That was like you? That was your life? Pretty much. Really? I mean, I gotta, I, I gotta remember that movie, but I kind of pretty much interesting yeah interesting. all right so then you came to new york i came into new york uh the reason why i came was because in california we were having a in a, like a job mar- uh like a job issue like everyone was getting laid off and this Got is it. when arnold schwarzenegger was like uh claiming to bring jobs back to california i had left at that time i just gave my parents an ultimatum i was like either the military or new york so my dad was in the military. He was like, just go to New York. So me, Vice, Chalk, like a bunch of us, uh, Eric V from the Baker Boys, we threw a going away party at, mm. at, a, at, a, at a, a soon-to-be strip club. My buddy gave me the keys to it, and I just made a bunch of money off of it, bought my ticket the next day, and I just like couch surfed for six How months. much did you make? About like five grand. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And that time, that's about like 15000 Yeah. That's I mean, we killed it. Money. We killed it. In Beverly Hills, we packed the hell out of that place. That's like what? Like six months rent if you're lucky in New York? Maybe? Five yeah. months? Yeah, at the time. At probably. the time? Yeah. 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 But luckily, I my I, I had two friends here, and he, they were they both lived together, and he was just like, just sleep on the couch for until you get on your feet. Nice. So I bar backed for like two years two or three years wow yeah wait yeah. wait where did you bar back anywhere it's actually still here it's called bar bar 169 mm. but under new ownership now so it you, was like you didn't know what you over. wanted to do you didn't know if you wanted to dj you didn't know no. so that was around the time serato wasn't out yet so i was like there's no man you're not bringing much respect records, right? to you crooked i don't know how you did it i don't know how djs used to lug records in new york yeah I'm, there was no way I was doing that. I wasn't bringing my records over here. I was not trying to carry that shit in the subway, si- in the subway system. I never carried it in the subway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, you, you have a trick. You have a trick to well, like, even I, a taxi cab you would When order. I was in Spanish Harlem, I lived in a five-floor five walk-up. Oh, hell oh, no. Wow. So, you know what I'm saying? It was, <laughs> it was a five-floor walk-up, and, I mean, what really saved us was gypsy cabs. Ah. Uh, yeah. Because... I could bargain with a gypsy cab. I could get a less fare, and they could take me, you know, uptown to downtown. And I, you know, everything was probably in the village at that time. Yeah. And I was getting paid maybe a hundred dollars to do a whole night, <laughs> and I was bringing like you know, like I don't know, probably four crates. Damn. But I was just talking to somebody about this, and I was like, I would bring four crates and milk crates. And then I'd, I'd, you know, I remember we were talking about Serato because it's like if you met a shorty, afterwards they'd be like, "Yo, let's let's hang out." And then 
They would you end up leaving. Yeah. Well, they would end up leaving because they see you with all these records. They're like, yeah. yeah, help me out real quick. And then you're loading like the the trunk, and it's just not sexy. And then they're just <laughs> kind of like, well. <laughs> He's they're not as like, big as I thought he was. Yeah. I was talking to somebody. They said like they were loading the crates. They turned around and she disappeared. Oh. She was, oh. <laughs> That's a magic trick right there, boy. But you, but you know, like if they were a real one, if they helped you load the trunk. And then I knew if they were a real one, if they were like helping me up the stairs. Five, bro. They're like struggling in this dress. <laughs> At high they're heels, like, like, this better be worth it. Uh. I oh remember there was God. a shorty that I like, I like. Or you got to warn them, like, yo, this is going to be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> you going to get this 12 inch. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I remember I was, like, lo- unloading the crates, and I was taking, like, I took one, and then I was like, yo, like, I'll be right back. And I, when I went downstairs, she was, she had two. She was, two. What? She was walking up with two, She's and I was like, buff. Yeah. And I was like, yo, I got to wipe this one off. Yo. yo that, you know, you know Stacy with the strong back? <laughs> Stacy, I, I did end up wiping her. I was like, yo. <laughs> strong ass Stacy. Yeah, yeah. Hashtag. You got some strong. <laughs> the way she just, you know, you feel protected and shit. <laughs> I mean, the, the the worst was like, I remember I was DJing at Pangea and it would start snowing, and it was like, how far was that from your house? I mean, that's Lafayette from 102nd Lex. Yeah, that's pretty far. Far about 40 minutes. Yeah, but they, you know, I got paid, and but it was like always that thing that when it snowed or New Year's Eve was the yeah. worst because mm-hmm. it's impossible to get a taxi on New Year's. And there after was New no Year's. Uber, zero and Uber, and it's cold as yep. fuck, and you're standing in the <laughs> middle of the street, and everyone's stealing your cab because as soon as you get a cab, and you're trying to load the trunk, someone just hops in the back seat and they take your fucking cab. And 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 to put a little more onto that, like his cold, like back then, and the cold now. Are very different. Two different codes. I moved here in the middle of winter in 2002, and that that cold is way colder than it is right now. Oh, maybe you just got. I think that was just your first cold. Yeah, yeah, no, it was two degrees. Bro, did you see how cold? Oh yeah, (laughs) it would be cold like that. Yeah, two degrees is a lot. Yeah, I had to like. I was like, okay, I moved here at two degrees. That is the marker right there. Not so, only that, back then also, like the cabs, like sometimes they roll down the window, be like, where are you going? And if it was far, they just drive off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's still, that's brutal. Still going on right now. Yo, fam, yeah. like cabs was a big problem back then. They would ditch you. Like, and it yeah. was like you saw like actual racism. Like, d- like MoMA, I've never seen MoMA lose his cool except with taxis. Damn. Yeah. I, there were times where like this is the only, this is always with MoMA. It would be me, MoMA, and Eleven, and like our homie Philippe or like Sean. It would be me and Sean hailing the cab, and Momo would have to hide. <laughs> I'm I not mean, fucking I with you, allowed, so but, but like that, that is, is true. But, but you are very right. I remember yeah. like watching on the news that there were act- there was like a, a big thing about it that they were like, "Yo, cabs are being racist." Yeah, no like, way. There was like a whole campaign behind that. Yeah, you know? he's the nicest guy from all of you guys. Yeah. No, no, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was one time where it was like it was like Momo was hiding, and it was me and Mo. <laughs> Poor Mo. <laughs> And then I opened the door, and then Mo like came out from the from the from the like <laughs> from the, from from the, the shadows. <laughs> from the shadows. <laughs> he was hiding between uh, two other cars, like boom. He just like leave the door open, and he just like dived in. <laughs> <laughs> and then the cab saw Mo and drove and was taking off, and Mo was so infuriated. It was oh, like we man. it took forever to get the cab. I think Mo like ripped the the the, the side mirror off. Allegedly, yeah. Yeah. And then I looked at him. I was like, "What? That's the side of you." He was like, "Stacy." <laughs> 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 well, yo, that We're was Stacy with the strong back. <laughs> yeah. Get him. Yeah. 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 They literally I, had to pass a law because yeah. of that. Yeah. That was a fucked That's up. Cold time. As yeah, it was. Fuck, yeah. I mean, we life. laugh about it now, but it was really, really, it was really bad. Fucked up. Like yeah. they, I like you know, like Channel Seven News. They would do these reports. And they would show like you know a black person and then like a white person and the cab would just drive by the black person and go to the white person. No, I think I saw that. I think I saw the exact yes. same uh, story. No, but, the, thing- but the great thing that happened was after Uber kind of went out, the cab started stopping for everybody. Of course, they were running out of fucking. I remember when Uber yeah. came out and Mo <laughs> and I was like linking up with Mo and he's like, "Bro, 
This is a great time for New York right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got my revenge. <laughs> it's like, I can get a cab anytime I want. <laughs> like, watch this. I'm going to call two. <laughs> two. <laughs> He's like, I don't even need to. <laughs> <laughs> They're both here. He's like, bro, they're taking me to Queens, man. He's like, SUV, yeah. baby. Deluxe. He's like, yo, they're taking me to Queens, yeah. bro. First I, Obama, now this. Yeah, queer. I got my DJ bag in one cab, and I'm in the other. <laughs> and it's going, we're going to meet. <laughs> we're going to meet at the same location. <laughs> oh. No wonder fucking New York DJs be mad, bro. You just have to deal with some shit, guys. Man, they're everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you came to, in two, uh, like, right after 9 11? Yeah. And then like the- right after the blackout. So it was 9-11 oh, and yeah, the blackout. Yeah. Oh. And then I came. And the funny thing is the blackout was actually uh, a selling point for me because my boys were calling me from over there. It was like, yo, whatever you're seeing in the news, it's way different than what was actually like the bars were open. They were giving away free beer. You know, on the news, everybody was like, it's a major. Cri-. I mean, it probably was a major crisis, but they're like, yo, it is. It's wild out here. I was like, I want to be part of that. I yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> for me, the reason why I said it was a selling factor was because it, it actually told me a lot about the city. Like, yeah. no matter how bad shit can get, like, the city bands together. As much as, like, it got a bad rap, like, New York's are assholes, New York is like this and that, everybody's mean. But when you get there, it's like, it's almost like family. Like, you, we don't even have to know each other. But, like, if we're both in New York or from New York or... We you have know, to currently live, Yeah, if shit goes down, we got each other's backs. Mm. Yeah, That's we'll how rip, it was in the pandemic, too. We'll rip you, we'll make fun of you, but we'll help you up. Yeah, but, but shit'll true. get done. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's true, because right after 9-11, everyone came together. Yeah. So then when the blackout happened after that, everyone was just, they're like, we, could, we can handle this. This is nothing. This is just a blackout. Yeah. So yeah. everyone, like, you know, that energy kind of How long stayed. was a blackout? I'm so sorry, guys. I don't know. I believe it was a, a week. Jeez, week and a half. It wasn't that while. long. It, it yeah. depends where you were. Like, I think if you were, like, in the BX or, like, in certain parts of Queens or Brooklyn, it lasted longer. But, like, Manhattan was maybe a, a day and a half or two. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah I, yeah. yeah, I was in L.A. at the time, so I don't... We just saw the ongoing story. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I went through the other blackout right after that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that shit happens. It's always in the summer. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. everyone has their AC on. The brownouts. Oh, actually, yeah. no. The one that I went through was what? Not Katrina. Was it? What was the hurricane? Hillary? Blue Sandy? Blue? Sandy. Oh, Sandy. Sandy. Sandy, came Sandy was through, bad too. And that that blacked out everything from 30, 34th Street down to yeah. Financial District. That was like a week. Yeah. That was really fucked up. That was crazy. That was around Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. It was on it was actually we spent Halloween in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Because I had to go to Sacramento and I was with a shorty and she actually drove me to like somewhere I think she drove me to like Baltimore Airport. So I oh, could get so I could get a flight out and catch my gig. Yo, Stacy was a yeah. real one. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did, did she carry you through the floods? <laughs> <laughs> I got you crooked. Yo, wherever you are, Stacy. Yeah. You're single. Hit us you got up. friends just yeah. like you. <laughs> we we need crooked. <laughs> we need crooked. Stacy back. It wasn't like a godsend. I was like, oh shit! Like you you down to drive? She's like, yeah, let's fuck it, let's go. And I was like, damn. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it for you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that shit, but I wouldn't have done that. If I knew how to drive, I wouldn't drive for you. Like, so wait, you came to New York, you bar back for two two years. Yeah. And then you didn't have any inclination to get into DJing, and then Serato came out. And then Serato came out, and then I, like, Maybe. I scraped up my bar back money, and I got a... a MacBook? A, yeah. Well, actually, I... I a bunch of my friends chipped in. At that time, I finally got, I finally made friends, and they all chipped in and got me a MacBook. Um, and I bought a Serato off of one of my boys that was like one of the first reps for the. U- Do you remember um, Jeff D? Jeff Dionis. He's a record exec, like a record promoter. Um, he also represented Serato before it was a thing yet. Mm. Um, so when is this? Like two thousand four? You think two thousand five? Two thousand five? Well, Serato came out five, yeah. I think. So. And then I started, um, I started DJing in like little bars here and there, trying to get my f- like bearings. in LES or like the Village or some shit. It, p- pretty much all of the LES at the right. time. There was like a club called Fat Baby, which is essentially like a dive bar but a club. Yeah, my there was a lot of those. Oh yeah, the memories of Fat Baby. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. If hell had a bathroom. It was fat. It baby. was definitely fat baby. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I remember I remember DJing. I looked over the edge and like somebody had like a, a like a fake leg and he was just like, <laughs> a prosthetic leg. I was like, oh yeah. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna jot this down as like when when I later in life when somebody tells me like man this DJ this gig sucks I'll be like dude you haven't had somebody waving the fake leg <laughs> like you haven't lived yet <laughs> wait till you hear that benchmark so way so way <laughs> were you were you going out in New York at this time were yeah you, I was were you out. checking out like what was were you checking out clubs and DJs and anything yeah so the not the club scene I was more I was always into like the underground like the edgier scene at the time at that time it was like the hipster scene was starting to right 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 bubble up this is when, like indie rock kind of started to blow up yeah this was like pre banana split for you guys in LA mm-hmm. I mean for for the LA people that was before all that um and it was like the indie rock scene like the strokes the yeah yeahs all that stuff was starting to bubble up right um and then like the blog house scene so it was like with mm-hmm. like rock to con and all those dudes right um and uh so i started i was like dwelling in that i remember i used to go to this one party called the shit hammer and like that was literally the shit like they would hmm. just post a bunch of porn photos and stuff like that and it was just like an all-out shit show mm. like those are the kind of parties that i went to um yeah this was like the cobra snake days right we're like pre-cobra snake so cobra snake was in la uh the east coast we had this thing called last night's party with this dude named bronx, bronx. yeah yeah so at what point did you start doing all of these bottle service clubs that like where you are in your career right now you're at little sister mm-hmm. you're at phd you're at tau you're at marquee you're at like all these other spots right yeah where, like, how did we get to that that point to where you are now? Because honestly, the last time I saw you, which is I don't know, had to be maybe over five years ago. Mm-hmm. The the place you were at in your career, no disrespect, you know. No. Like I always had, I always loved you as like a DJ, and you know, and you were always cool as fuck. But you were like kind of like a, a kind of like the fill in guy. Yeah, the on call yeah. DJ. Well, like kind of like you know, like uh, like Neil could do the job. And we can't, like, someone called out, so let's call Neil. Yeah. yeah. But you were always the go-to kind of, like... First in line. You know what I mean? Yeah. No disrespect, but... No, I'm no, 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 no. I don't... Because I was that guy I at one point, that, too. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we all, all have us, to be that guy yeah, before Yeah, all we of us that, were you know? that guy <laughs> until we weren't. Bro, you know? I used to carry my DJ bag <laughs> and the trunk with a pair of pants. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case I had to go... So we, we were the Stacys. <laughs> yeah. We were the strong Stacys. Yeah, we all got a little Stacy with a strong back in us in our DJ career. We were all... All on the bench, just waiting to get called in, just to be you, like, "Yo, me like, and yo, coach, yo, me in. I'm ready to go in." I remember those days, like on a Saturday, I'd be like, "Fuck," and I kind of look at my phone, like, "Nah, like no one's calling me." And then I would get the call somewhere, and I'd be like, "All right, fuck it, let's Bro, go." I would yeah. cancel dinners. I'd be like, oh, "I can't make it. I gotta go DJ and just go off to the night." Yeah, yeah. there was so many times I did that. Where but I was you know like, what's oh. funny? Doing that makes you a reliable pe- person, yeah. and eventually, you're the guy. You you end up getting those gigs before anybody else so well, wait you're dependable for the for the f- the first people that gave me my shot was pavon and sean rose they were promoters um mm. uh and they were doing a couple clubs like pretty much all over the uh all over the city yeah yeah shot to pavon man yeah, yeah. I and mean, those guys <laughs> top on the west they, coast they, now yeah, he's killing it they yeah. they come a long way <laughs> um and then from there it's it's kind of weird like and crooked i all, all of us know, just in the city in general, if you're in like in a major city, it's really hard to break into those scenes. Um, so what I started to do was I started to formulate a plan of going outside the state and then bringing it back in. Mm, that's what I noticed about you. Ooh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, you yeah. worked a lot out of town. Yeah. Yeah. I um, I sold myself as, as a New York DJ. Uh, you know, I was doing all the Lower East Side spots, but I understood the clubs. I mean, DJing for as long as I have, I understand how how those rooms work right it's the music you just got to figure out how how the format is um you know and i had a lot of uh you know like advisors like vice Mm -hmm. and like a lot of the the scam guys from from early on Mm -hmm. uh they're all like childhood friends and they were like this is how it works out here because out there and out here were kind of different because vegas was happening um so anyway uh, I started to come out with a plan like if New York isn't going to recognize me, I'm going to go outside the state, build my name all over the place. They're going to have to bring me in. They will have to. And then so that's what I started to do. And but it then, was a long process. It was a super yeah, long process. Years and but years. I was I was committed. Yeah, yeah, I was committed. It was a grind. It was just I was just my area just was much bigger. 
And so that's what I did. I built my name outside the state. What's what, what were some of the first cities that you started building your name in? How'd you get those gigs out of town? So I think the first one... Were you kind of like saying, like, did you spin at one club once and you're like... Oh, I have a residency yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. We all kind of did that at one point. Yeah, yeah. Like, no. I, I think I did, like, I think, like, you at the time glorify. I was doing, I, yeah, because I did, like, I, you know, I was coming up, I did show, I did PM, but I was, like, I was booked at, like, Kane and all these spots, but I never did Marquee. And I think I did one night at Marquee. They're like, well, that's one on the resi. But that, that was... <laughs> But on my mixtapes, I would list where I DJ, and I was like, well, I can add Marquee yeah. there now. <laughs> yeah, Technically. Fine. I mean, I mean, DJs do that still. But yeah. I mean, I'm, hey, I'm all about the hustle. Right. You got, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but you just got to play that game. Yeah, you yeah. Do. Um, so, Wait, what were some of the first cities that you started going to? Uh, North Carolina, Atlanta. Shout out to Alex. AC. Over, over there. Alex IZ. How did, North how did Carolina, you get into those scenes? So Atlanta was... Um, Atlanta was from DJ Control. Mm. Uh, DJ Control was like, hey, because uh, I helped him get into like a couple of the lounge club things out out in New York. And he was like, yo, he was like, let me return the favor and let me let me see if I can get you some slots out in my area. And he linked me up with one of my boys, Jason Moon. And he he at the time was a promoter, and he brought me down to Atlanta. The rest was history. Like I I literally fell in love with that city. Atlanta wow. is like no joke. So you were just early on having great relationships with out of town DJs, you're networking, and, you know, you're networking, ne networking my ass off. But that's yeah. always been my thing. That's going back to the whole Vice story about his parents. I uh, I always push them. I'm like, yo, we got to go out and we got to network. That's the name of this game. Mm. You just have to. It's a how many friends can you conjure up? Um, and that's what he did. That's what we did. We always, late at night, we'd go to a different club, meet a bunch of the people within the industry, and just continue to build that career. Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's like, you know, people don't realize it, but that's like kind of like a great talent to have. Just to be like really sociable, likable, and, you know, be able to network easily. Yeah. And, 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 and uh, kind of navigate yourself through multiple circles yeah like it's 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 really important and you know i feel like over the past 10 years or so you've built like this large you know kind of list of like contacts and everyone and it, like you know like your name is everywhere everywhere i go like every dj knows you yeah like every fucking city i go well it's kind of annoying but you know. <laughs> 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 no, I'm sick of again. this guy. <laughs> no, I respect it. I respect. No, it's else. just you know. I mean, we're all in this. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, it's a great yeah. talent to have, but also he's a great talent to DJ. That goes hand in hand with yeah. his work. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of people can get through with the networking and be really bad DJs. And but you but know. you know what? Even even still, some of those DJs they really still are like more sustainable than a talented DJ with like an ego or anything else. Yeah. You know. I'd be like being likable and professional, I, I would say more importantly is like more important now than any other time before. Just being likable and like professional is is way more important than anything else. Too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. now, yeah. But Especially you, now. But before, it's actually crazy. Like I would get like these nightmare stories about, you know, DJs that were coming into town in certain cities that I'd be in. And they're just like, dude, they have this like superstar attitude. Oh, sure. Or yeah. I was just grateful. I was just grateful just for happy getting the shot. You yeah, know? yeah. And talking to other DJs, getting different perspectives on like how their scene works and like their local hits and stuff like that. It was always fascinating to see how everything works so differently. Fat baby humbled you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, I have a question actually because everyone's been DMing me. You know, like I've been getting all these messages. There's been like this new Jolo documentary on Netflix. You know Jolo, right? Yeah. Did you ever have to deal with that here in New York? I had like a short run with with Jolo. Literally, it was like only one one experience. That's and enough, it, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he didn't. <laughs> How he, many Picasso's Jolo, he gave you? Jolo didn't really. <laughs> Jolo didn't pop off when I was playing. Like he did, but he it was it was a mild Jolo. It was Not the like, tail end. It was the tail end. Yeah. When he was like, he, he was, was on the run. <laughs> <laughs> he where was he, like, don't say my name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where he may have been, where he thought he might have gotten found out. But right. Like they were just like, yo, can you play party rock anthem for some weird reason? Like he was obsessed with that song. Yeah. And like 
But I didn't, I don't have the stories like some of our guys do. Like I was actually at a dinner and like somebody was counting the minutes. How many thousand dollars, like how many thousands he was spending by the minute. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, there was because, a there was a like during the Jolo time, there was a time when he would show up at like three AM mm-hmm. and then he would like keep the club open till five. Yeah. Or six AM. So then like in New York, a, you know, a DJ is starting at ten and they're DJing till four, and now they're DJing till six AM and they're watching this 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 like high roller like Jolo or some it was always somebody or Prince from Dubai or somebody yep. from Dubai that came in late mm-hmm. who's spending like I don't know probably like some crazy shit like eighty thousand dollars or a hundred thousand oh yeah or even more I don't even know what the fuck's going on it was but then these these clubs would stay open later yeah and they wouldn't compensate the DJ. your rate doesn't oh change. no I was literally gonna that belt was that crazy. out like, same rate <laughs> <laughs> but that's four so hours crazy. eight hours same rate <laughs> But that's so insane. <laughs> I, and we I, really appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Because the same thing happened in Vegas. Like, we, Jola would show up, and I, everyone, like, you know, obviously the waitress is happy because they're getting tipped for every, like, Cristal bottle. Right. And, you know, I remember, like, 4 a.m. or 4.30 a.m., like, and then it's like the club is kind of, like, starting to wind down. And then the manager would be like, yo, we're doing a presentation. We're filling a bathtub with Cristal. Jeez. And I'm like, how many bottles of Cristal? They're like, don't worry. We're, he's buying all the bottles of Cristal, and we're going to throw them in, and Jolo's going to take a bath in the Cristal. A bath bomb of Damn. Cristal? And then so like- That's One of the he, most Jesus. ballers shit I've ever yeah. heard. <laughs> and his favorite song was like this Cascade song. So I'd have to play that like five times in a row. And then he's, he would get brought in, and he's taking a bath, and then everyone's just like, you know, like wilding out, dancing around him in like an empty room. There's like nobody there except so maybe his peoples and then maybe I saw like, you know, Paris or someone, maybe a couple celebrities. I don't know. Maybe Jamie Foxx somewhere. And he's over here taking a Cristal bath. Wait. And taking a Cristal bath naked? No. Okay. With clothes on. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> hold on. With yeah. a full suit on, he's on the in the bathtub, and he's just like- Just kind of like, hey, yeah. I mean, you're spending that kind of money, you might as well get naked, because yeah, yeah. you can literally do- You're above know. the law at that point. I'm imagining, like, you know- <laughs> I'm imagining the waitress is like, Jolo, you look dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Let me scrub your back. <laughs> Jolo, Jolo. Jolo. And he's like, okay, okay, I take a bath, and he jumps in, and then they're like popping more champagne and doing- <laughs> and but I'm my, over there in the DJ booth like, yo, am I getting paid extra <laughs> for this shit? No. And I never got paid extra. I only bring this up because I recently did a six-hour gig here in New York, mm-hmm. and I was nervous about it. But it actually ended up being the most fun I've had ever. Like it was yeah. like, And I ended up doing seven hours because they wanted to extend it. Oh. But I was like... It was so like PTSD. Oh, Jolo again. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was like it was. It just reminded me. I was like, oh man, like this is what I miss about DJing. I Ooh, miss yeah. six hours. I miss DJing the first two hours, setting a vibe, and then the next two hours, and the next two hours. And I was like, I'm. I missed like controlling the night and playing all kinds of different music. Yeah, I so. Like I, I missed that shit. But when they asked me to stay longer, the club compensated me for the extra hour, and I was kind of like. Wow. You don't even have to ask. No, no, no. Yeah, they was like, you know, we'll compensate you. And I was like, oh, like, that's the new thing. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the girl that was getting him beaten. I was like, yeah. oh, you're opening the door? Because <laughs> I was like, you know. But what do I have to do? I, do? I'm like, I'm not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just used to motherfuckers telling me to stay an extra hour. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then, like, because there would be some private events sometimes. You DJ some private. Yeah. Like, yeah. We're going to go an hour extra, and you'd get paid an hour yeah, 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 for those private events. Yeah. But. But there's these clubs that, that they would tell you to stay like two hours, an hour late, and they never compensated you. Yeah. yeah. But I was I, I I remember thinking about that, and I was thinking about th- that happening a lot in New York, it, at, especially during the Jolo period. Yep. Mm. But I was I was wondering if you ever had to deal with that shit. No, I I no. He he actually left before four when that when that happened. Um, <laughs> he was on. And run. I was sweating. And I was run. like, oh my god. Uh, but n- now that we're talking about, did you ever get Don Johnson? Yeah, Don motherfucking Johnson. Who's yeah. this? Yeah, you know Don he was Johnson. Pre, he's pre Jolo. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. He's the, he's the, he's like a big spender from Vegas. He's like a 
I think like a big poker gambler. He's a big gambler. I never knew that. Yeah. He just kind of popped up. He popped up. Yeah. He would come to the club and they would like, yo, Don Johnson's in the building. You have to play like Sweet Child of Mine or Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. It was Bon Jovi. Living on a Prayer. Living on a Prayer or any Bon Jovi. Um, and then, wait, what was the newer Bon Jovi that, uh, what was that other song? That was like, my kind of, it's my life. It's my life. It's my life. Yeah. Yep. If you wanted to shake it up, you could play It's My Life. <laughs> but he well, gave yeah. you he money. You got, you got compensated for that. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. He would come and tip you or he, he'd give you a bottle of champagne. Yeah. And it was, and you'd just get on the mic and say, Don motherfucking Johnson's in the building. And he'd just come. And like, I remember there was this, I, we, I think we talked about it. But there was this time when Nicki Minaj was performing and Five was DJing. I don't recall this. And in the middle of her performance, they interrupted Nicki Minaj's performance to do a Don Johnson presentation. And all of a sudden, Bon Jovi's playing and Nicki Minaj is like in the club on, on stage, stage. Just like, what the fuck's going on? Why do I hear Bon Jovi? No, the fuck <laughs> way. <laughs> like... She, and she doesn't know that management and uh, and the the operators and the owners want this, so like they're kind of hating on five because they're like, why the fuck are you interrupting my set and playing Don, Don like, Jovi? Like, why are you saying Don Johnson? Who the fuck is this guy? And why are you playing Bon Jovi wow, right that's now? Fuck, bro. but that's how Vegas was at that. I mean, probably still, still they is. would do that. I mean, they probably wouldn't do it now because of social media, because people would be like. They were like, what the fuck's going on? Damn, the barbs cool. would tear the place down. Yeah, yeah. Bro. Somebody bro. needs to bring uh, Don Johnson on, 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 on road <laughs> and see how he felt when Jolo stepped on the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he took my reign. <laughs> and then Jolo appeared. Yeah, I, <laughs> I want to say it was Don Johnson that, that, uh, that caused that whole dead mouse thing. Yes. Yeah. Wait, what dead mouse thing? Where he got tipped like, I don't know, $100,000 or more. I had heard that that tip didn't actually go through. I heard it went through. Oh, it did. They, they, they. Yeah, well, he they, was scanning it to see it go through, and then he played it. I think they were at uh, a wind property, probably excess. Yeah, because they oh, were threatening sure. legal action if he didn't. Yeah, and Dead Mouse, Dead Mouse was playing, and Don Johnson was there, and he wanted to hear Bon Jovi. Yeah, and he made Dead Mouse play Bon Jovi. But he said, I'll tip you like 100000 Yeah, there's like a YouTube video oh, apparently shit, for, of that. him yeah, playing that. I don't know the exact amount. It could have been more than 100000 Yeah, it was something ridiculous. Yeah, for Dead Mouse to do some shit. So, yeah. I just I, wanted to ask you because you brought up Jolo. I was like, wait, who was before Jolo? There was somebody else and it was, it was Don, Don Johnson. He comes to New York sometimes, right? Yeah. He, he, I, he, I only got Don Johnson here in Philly. Mm. Yeah, but you you saw him regularly in New York. You came to nah. It was just like once in a while because I only heard about him in Vegas, and right. then he would appear in New York. I'm like, oh shit, my boys in Vegas were talking about. But you like, you, you were mind. definitely DJing in New York when New York was starting to become almost like Vegas, right? When well, it started yeah. having like this weird Vegas energy. Yeah, but n not like the music wasn't there, but they wanted to make the same the Vegas ambience? money. Yeah, and like and kind of like you know catered to the clients. I mean, we like in Vegas, but in New York, we weren't making the money that you guys were making. It was you guys were killing it. <laughs> what do you mean, the bar or the DJs? The DJs, like we had, like I wasn't in the scene when the spenders when when it was big in Vegas. Mm -hmm. I was more in the the Lower East Side scene at that time. The lower, oh, you were. Yeah, I was deeper in the Lower East Side scene, the indie rock scene, the hipster scene. Then while like. You guys were like Reach, and everybody was over at Marquee. Yeah. I was in the Lower East Side scene. Who like uh, what is this Madonna story? Like Marco was telling me about. Was that when you were DJing, or was that before? It was no. This is during. What is this Madonna story? So Marco wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he smiled as soon as you brought it up. He's like, "Yeah." He took so my notes. The the epicenter of like the hipster scene was a spot called Luke and Leroy down in the uh, in the West Village, and I was. I was their in-house DJ when some of the guys were unreliable, but I was also like the bar back, the AV guy. And so one day the owner was like, yo, um, I need you to come in early to make sure that the equipment is right. I was like, all right, cool. He was like, we got a special guest performance, but I can't really tell you who it is. So I walked in there and I was just looking at the equipment. I was like, yeah, it's fine. I went outside and I was just hanging outside. Two cars, two SUVs roll up, these umbrellas pop up, and then like these guys that look like Secret Service guys, the umbrellas just kind of ran right into the front door, and the owner was like, "Yo, go upstairs to the club and make sure that the audio stuff is um 
is good. So I will run up there and it's dark. And all of a sudden you see these flashlights. They're like, who are you? This and that. And like, they're pulling out guns. Um, oh shit. I didn't even know what was going on. And then the <laughs> lights come on and it's Madonna and all of her security. And uh, basically they were, prom- they were promoting a new single. It's called Hung Up at the time. Um, wait, you wait. act like we don't know what that song is. <laughs> that little song. <laughs> All right, let me, small song. There were, there were, Kate, there were, wait, wait. We've never heard. Can you sing us a little bit of it? <laughs> How does it go? How does it go? There's a little I'm going to pull up the lyrics really quick and sing this for you. <laughs> now, they were promoting Hung Up. Um, and it sampled some a, big disco song. Yeah, yeah, right? I don't know. I something don't know. from. <laughs> Kimmy, Kimmy? No. From Baba or something? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I almost got shot by uh, Madonna's um, security, but the night went off. Uh, the night went on well, and yeah, so this was, was a near story. death experience. Yeah. with Madonna. So this is the the story that you wanted Marco yeah. for us to tell and talk about. <laughs> I'm happy now. <laughs> I think we're gonna shut off Marco's <laughs> mic for the rest of the so. Lord. <laughs> Raise your hand when you want to speak. Uh, yeah, it wasn't really much of a DJ thing. It no, no, no. Of, it's funny though. You know, yeah. you almost dying. Uh, yeah, you, know. you made it. But that almost killed me. So, <laughs> but Yo, yeah. I do have a question though. Like with New York after the pandemic, I feel like you know we were talking a little bit about this, but and I tell people this because everywhere I go, like I don't know, and I could be wrong, but when I talk to DJs in certain cities, like let's say Miami. Texas and maybe certain different, you know, cities across the country, they're saying like, you know, things are slowing down and there's not as much work. And then I'm telling them like, yo, New York is like getting busier than ever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a, and then every time I come to visit, there's like a new spot that opened. It's there's like more and more spots opening, opening up. You're yeah. even saying like, you're tired, right? You're I'm exhausted. Working so much. Yeah. Like, I've, I'm on my third cup of coffee right now. <laughs> right. But I'm saying, like, with your experience, it's funny because it's like when I talk to some of these, so, like, I've noticed that the cities that were open during the pandemic, when everything was closed and they were open and they were killing it, and they were working six to seven nights a week, Yep. those cities are slowing down. Yes. But then New York has become like, yo, I'm getting I'm tired, man. Like, I'm working five, six nights a week. Yeah. I, like, what's going on over here? Dude? I don't know government money is still flowing i i don't know yeah. i i just know that there's like there's more clubs now than i've seen since like 10 like 10 yeah 10 since like the cane days that whole block that whole yeah. three block radius yeah the like, 27th street we were yeah, talking about that. like marquee yeah. home guest house bungalow eight yeah quo like all of that stuff now it's just scattered throughout the city we have like clubs opening up constantly so there's no shortage of work it's just a matter of trying to get into that scene. All these motherfuckers are gonna start moving here. Yeah, <laughs> you, just, you made it too hot. Rush. Made it too hot. There's the gold rush. I mean, we were down for a while. Like yeah. we were, right. we were, we were down for a and while. And it's the pay decent for most of these places. For it's some it's actually better post pandemic than it was pre pandemic. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, I've heard the rates are going up. Yeah, yeah. The rates are shockingly going up because they were venues, down for yeah. a while. There's certain venues that are paying more than Vegas. Ooh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's good. I don't know about all that, but no, they. Are. Yeah, you'd be surprised, Mark. Yeah, you'd be very fucking surprised. You'd be very surprised. So. Yeah, no. So like, it's it's going good out here. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's busier than I I've seen in a long time. And yeah. then with like the DJs, the energy with the DJs. I I'm hearing about all these new DJs coming out. There's like a new generation. Everyone's eating though. Everything's yeah. good, right? It's good. It's good. There's like um, I think I think right now with uh. You know, the older DJs and the younger DJs were just trying to figure out how to coexist, I guess. Like, mm. it's like uh, coming out of the pandemic, it just, it was definitely eye opening because we were like, you know, who, who are these people? And then whatever happened to these other people? Like, it was just like when the doors open, it was like a whole nother, it was like not even just a new class, it was like a several classes just kind of came in. So I am starting to see though that there is a line in the sand between two different scenes, and it's a Manhattan scene, and then there's like the Brooklyn scene. Yeah, oh, but yeah. the but the Brooklyn scene is popping. Yeah, like I rarely go to Brooklyn. I like I feel like I got to go to Brooklyn more often because some there's like a lot of great DJs and a lot of like dope parties in Brooklyn that I have to like you know go out of my way to come come and check out because I don't know everyone's telling me like yo. Like, I mean, the Manhattan scene is, like, cool, but it's almost like it's holding on to, like, this era yeah. from 10 years ago. 
this mm-hmm. bottle service era. Yeah. But it's almost like Brooklyn is really like something organic is happening over there. Where it, it kind of maybe feels like the village or LES or like, you know. There's like scenes. You know? There's yeah. parties. Like 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 MoMA's party, uh, everyday yeah. people. Like there are there are crews that are coming out that are throwing their own things. Um, whereas like pre pandemic it was just clubs. You know, yeah. uh, now there's like crews coming in and throwing their entire nights and they're pretty much running the scenes uh, like they're running their own scene, if that makes any sense. Right. Like, right. I've yet know, to go to like Brooklyn Mirage. Like I haven't even stepped foot in there. That is. And everyone keeps telling me that shit is like they're like they're just floored. Like you haven't been to Brooklyn Mirage. I'm like, no, I haven't gone. Well, there's, I mean, Brooklyn Mirage even has their competitors tech support. Mm-hmm. Like and that's like a whole warehouse underground scene, too. They they do circle loco. They do like it's like a big like tech house scene, but you know you got Brooklyn Mirage tech support. Like Brooklyn is just crazy right now. They're just cranking out things. With you working so much, is it kind of a problem that you don't get to go out and hear other DJs, or it doesn't matter anymore? <sighs> it is a struggle. Uh, it is a struggle trying to keep up with you know who like the new guys that are coming up. Um, yeah, and or just even checking out different scenes. Yeah, what's going it's, on. It's, right? It is tough. You know, I try to pop in when I do have nights off, when, like, I don't, I'm not lined up back-to-back on gigs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I try to, but I'm also exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, so. Yeah, my feet don't work like it did, uh, you know, 15 years ago. So the younger generation of DJs coming in, they actually are showing what open format looks like now. Mm, for the in, in their guys. perspective. Yeah. yeah. Right. In what ways, in what yeah. ways? Like, Coming up in the scene, you know, we had AM. I, yeah. I spoke about this a little bit on our on our podcast. We had we had AM, and and the the newer generation is almost doing something that resembles that, oh. um, where they're doing the unpredictable. Right. Like for us, it was like what Journey, Don't Stop Believing, like those things. Like he would throw that out there, uh, Black Betty, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Now it's. Lenny Kravitz into Obama. Well, well the like, thing is, like, the New York scene always had it. Uh, AM just kind of, like, brought turntablism into it. Enhanced mm. it a bit. And so okay. we, what he did was, like, he made it, like, you know, 4K, 3D. <coughs> yeah. You know what I'm yep. saying? He made it into, like, a Marvel movie. But it was always around, like, New York hip-hop DJing and the club scenes always had open format. Yeah. So, like, it was always a mixture. So they always had the rock hip-hop and everything in there but post i mean uh just before the pandemic that whole like two years before the pandemic yeah it ran stale oh no 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 i'm yeah. i'm i'm sure like no no i'm talking about like in the 90s to 2000s oh okay like we okay. were like before pre-am yeah like there was we were doing all the rock sets we were doing everything we were mixing everything we yeah. were mixing house and and hip-hop and everything um, he just elevated with the turntablism. He elevated with the turntablism, but the difference between the young kids playing open format versus like what was going on in the '90s and 2000s is that um, we would hit pockets, so we, we'd have sets. Right. We do yeah. like an '80s set, a rock set, yeah, which would be like you know four to eight songs yeah. of rock music, and then we'd move to like another genre. Yeah. But these kids are doing one song, one song into one it. song into one song, which is very interesting. Because I don't, and it's it's more interesting to me, and I think it's, I, I've talked to people, and they're like, I, I think it's semi-genius, because I can't, I can't find the patterns in what they're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. But they're telling, like, I talk to, like, other DJs, and they're like, no, you're giving them more credit than than what they're doing <laughs> he's like i think they're just going by bpm and they just have like this weird playlist or crate with I like do a little songs. bit of both i do a little bit of both i do the, you know? the song selection bunch and then i do the one 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 i'm the same way I, i'm the same way when it comes to pockets like right yeah. you got if you have that flow go with that flow for a little bit and then switch gears right but the thing is is like the newer guys Maybe they just don't have anything uh, like anyone to reference. Like AM was a while ago. These guys are like twenty five. Yeah, AM's almost. So they were like almost twenty years ago. I I Actually, I mean I can't put a year on it, but they don't have a point of reference for like other like older DJs to look and be like, I want to do that. They're just doing whatever they they feel. I think they they don't know. 
to do pockets. They just there's not a I don't, for them I don't think see. anyone needs to do a pocket. I just think like the way that we did it back in the day, like in the in the two thousands or nineties, it was just different. We everyone did sets because it it dealt with a certain energy at a certain time when the club opened. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. So like it was like you know a rock set. We know it was like a high power rock set, and then there was like a mid tempo rock set that we would do a little bit earlier. But we would never do a 120, 128 BPM rock set at 11 o'clock. We'd, no, hit, right. we'd hit that shit at 2 a.m. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? When everyone's going to sing the words and everyone's drunk and we know yeah. they're drinking. Yeah. Of course. You know, but I, but I think the way, that's why we did those pockets because it's like ACDC, Bon Jovi, Guns N' Roses, Gary Glitter, or we're like whatever we're putting in that pocket. Yeah. You know? I would feel you guys did it because it's more structured and it's more palatable to in you know digest that then the one 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 because it's kind of like where the fuck am i at and then these kids just you they're the tiktok generation where every video is different every you know, song they hear is different so their intake is probably a little bit more different. i think as a dj it makes more sense to stay in a pocket yeah and get the most out of that energy as you can and then when you see it kind of getting a little oversaturated like oh switch people are, people are getting tired of this energy yep yeah. Let's go to another energy, another pocket, and see how they go. Mm. Because in, there's no fucking way back in the day, if I went into a dance hall like set, Rhythm, yeah. I could play one dance hall song and then go into hip hop. Somebody would come to me. And, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, that's somebody would yell you. at me. If I played one rock song and went into hip hop, somebody would be like, why don't you play this and this? But that's why what, you only play one LA song? Cats, <laughs> LA Cats did that shit. Yeah. Right? Because we didn't know what the fucking the rhythm was and we didn't have no Jamaican culture out there. So when you would play, uh, I don't know, like a Sean Paul song into a Soka song, which is Kevin Little, you'd be like, oh, this kind of makes sense in their brain. It makes sense. But you're playing two different things at that point. So I, I get what you're saying. But No, I think it's, it's, it's about kind of like also when you're playing for a room, everyone's kind of unified in one energy. So yeah. if you're in disco... And you stay in disco and you keep that energy going and then you're like, all right, they're you're getting tired of this. Let me try to go into 80s or yeah. let me try to go into like a little up-tempo hip hop or switch it up. I think now because people are creating their own playlist. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a yes. playlist generation. Yep. Yes. Not only that, people want to stand out and be like, this is me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this is like this. The this music I'm playing is a representation of me. Of my personality. And my taste you're mm -hmm. following what I want you to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's the one song into one song into one song. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of these young kids are, they're very in tune with the other, what the other young kids want. Yeah. So it's working because they're, they're literally in tune with each other. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, that, that also goes back to what I was saying. Like, they don't have a point of reference. They're, mm -hmm. they're doing what, they're doing they, them. they know that they're doing works. them. Yeah. Yeah. They're doing them. But, it might be because they, uh, and this is just my thoughts on this, like, it might be because they just have never tried to get the most out of one genre, like the pockets that we're talking about. Right. Because they know that that works. So they just do that without trying to expand more like, okay, if I'm going to do this rock song, I'm going to do this rock song, I'm going to do this rock song and get the most out of it and then switch gears because they don't have any point, point of reference. I, they don't have the uh, the older open format DJ that they were like, I want to be just I like that I think the guy. point of reference is what- They're they just were, doing them. I think the old, their point of reference now is probably the latest one I would say when Virgil was DJing and it was kind of like weird, up, like obscure shit and how much obscure shit can you, the more obscure you make it, the, the, the crazier and cooler you get. And I think that's their latest point of reference. Well, I think I don't know if it was Virgil's style of DJing. I just think the fact that Virgil is DJing is the point of reference. I think that that he is like, and he is a person who is creative, and no matter what he's doing and expressing himself, it's acceptable. Yeah, it's it's authentically Virgil. Yes. Okay. And that is probably more important. Than somebody who's like, you know, I know what to play for this crowd and to get everyone moving. And the structure of it. When yes. it's more just like it's Virgil. And it's kind of like that in itself is a statement of him DJing. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, let's be honest. Like, I don't think I've met one person that says I'm going to watch Virgil DJ to hear what he's going to play and like enjoy his music. People are there to just watch and experience 
Virgil up there Doing DJing. Virgil. Yeah, yeah, and because just, I, and to put it on social media. And I don't know if you guys ever saw him DJ. I saw one of his sets at Excess one year uh, that he did, and it was like he it was kind of left everywhere. Like it was just here's this, here's that. I think he played like "Say My Name," "Destiny's Child" into a Kanye record that I was I was like that doesn't make no fucking sense at all, but it. The kids loved it. It could make sense. Yeah, yeah. So I was just Actually, like, uh, sounds kind of dope. I know. I just, well, yeah, I'm it's, making mental notes of this. Yeah, but it's, but it's again what I'm used to is seeing you guys. But it's also this boiler room era where it's kind of yeah. like that too. That too. That's if the point I'm of cool and all my friends are cool and we're we're fucking feeling this music. You guys, you guys suck. You guys aren't on this shit. Like we're on this. You shit. You guys need yeah. to be. You know what I mean? I and think it's that's like another point of reference. And that's there, another thing. Is like yo, if like that's the whole thing of having like you know being a promoter or being a dj and having a following and then your following just being like behind you in a boiler room set whiling out they feel like they're part of your movement too right yeah you know what i'm saying i, I don't know i could be wrong no, no, with no, all but, of this yeah, no no, no you're I, right because yeah another point right. of reference is the tiktok sets yeah. where it's just like they're playing this and then they go left and the fucking crowd explodes and that's another point of reference what's a tiktok set like those sets where you just see just uh, like a routine of these DJs, they'll pl they're playing something and then they goes to they goes to another song that you were not expected to go with, and then the room explodes and the vi the video just continues like you should have been there, like it wants to give these kids uh, like a FOMO, like you should have been here. That's that that was us playing. All I do is win. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, <laughs> All I do that's that one song that anytime you saw it on the Insta story, you're like. I know exactly what that dude's playing. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only song that everybody's hands but go again, up that, in a club. That's the point of reference. Like <laughs> other people like myself had AM and, and yeah. these other cats. I, I think Jamie had a good point on, on the whole Spotify thing. It's yeah. like like a, a lot of these guys, a, a, a lot of these DJs that came out, a lot of them came out of the pandemic and it was essentially they were just playing Spotify songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was that or SoundCloud. Like, because I'm seeing a lot of mashups being played now like current mashups um, that you would only hear on on SoundCloud. And some of these DJs, like some of the styles that they're that they're doing is essentially like they're just selecting songs, which is fine. They're selecting the right songs. Um, but I also think we're, we're, we're seeing the development stage of a lot of these DJs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're Absolutely. Thousand, whereas, whereas, whereas like back in the day, we would have never seen this you know we would have never seen this i mean how long thing. did yeah. it take you guys to go outside and dj when you from the first moment you got your equipment and started practicing it took some years to even get brave to be outside these kids they'll get the equipment today and have a gig tomorrow well it's not i think it moves faster than that i think it's if you have the if you have a following and if yeah. you have a yeah. following and you have and you have like the numbers on social media you you could actually just do anything. Yeah, right. you could like Absolutely. be a DJ. Mm -hmm. You could like start your own TV show. Be a photographer. One you could day. be an actor. Yes. You could be whatever you want as long as you have a following. So yeah. like I think what we're seeing, like I said, is we're seeing if I already have a following, you know, and I'm cool and I look cool and I know how to dress, you know, it gives me like two years to develop my DJing. But everyone's seeing the development, whereas yeah. anyone else who wasn't famous, like all of us here. You know, you wouldn't see that development, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, but we've seen that before too. Like yeah. promoters turning to DJs, that was like a big thing. Well, there's no promoters. I feel like promoters don't hardly they hardly exist nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, in uh, New York, there there's a whole new crop of them. There yeah. there's a whole new crop of them. Oh, that's good. and they're um, so different, so different. But really? some of these, uh, the, but what about eight? Five, five to eight years ago, like yeah. promoters were turning into DJs. Yeah. That and was we were, a lot of us that were just DJs were getting X'd out because not only can they play music, they were bringing people. Yeah. You know? um, they're because they're getting paid for both. Well, they're actually getting paid for one as a promoter and they were just going up there and playing songs. Yeah. 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 And selling bottles. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, hey, so it's, I it is a hustle. So. I, have a, I have a question like leading up to where you are right now. In your career would you say like this is like you're the most confident in your abilities and and skills to hold down a room right now i'm in the are you at the high are you at the highest level of your djing right now you see so the reason why i'm like hesitant to to, to answer that is because i i'm not really trying to achieve a level what i'm trying to do is i'm just trying to have fun again and i am now i'm 
I'm a lo- I'm having a lot more fun now than I was before, where it was just kind of like, you know, certain people were dictating like the music and stuff like that. Now it's like because open format is now open format again. Yeah. I'm in this like, fuck it, let's just try it. Let's see. With all the stages we go in our careers, you know, it, everything leads up to something. So like I'm right. asking like to where you are right now where you're very busy and you're able to hold down multiple rooms and juggle events and do all of this. Like what was the training that led to this that make you that makes you confident and competent to execute all of this shit? I, I mean for you me know? it's just for me it's just time. Right. Like I put in a lot of time, tried a lot of witnessed a lot of scenes and see the shift of music constantly but it's that's constant so it's like that's why i'm saying like trying to achieve i'm not really trying to achieve there's no real goal here except to just go out have fun try new shit try old shit and just keep it moving but you're having more fun now because like you're you're saying like the music selection isn't as limited it's yeah. not boxed in. It's, it's actually not. opened up now. It is It is very open right now. I feel like it's really open now, too, so I'm having more fun. Yeah, yeah. I'll you know, do like, a tech house scene. I, I'm doing uh, Little Sister on Thursday, which is predominantly hip-hop. I'm at Highlight Room, which is open format. And then I'm at, um, at Star Child, which is like anything goes. As long as you keep the room, anything goes. Mm. Um. And that's New York. All of it's New York. Yeah. You know, so, and then I could, the following week I'll be at the palace where it's all tech house, you know, it, I'm predominantly all tech house. So it's like one of those things where the, I'm more confident. Yes, but there's really no goal. Like I'm just having fun now. But that's rare though. Not a lot of DJs can do all those rooms. You know what I mean? And that just, that just came to experience, came through experience and like just being open-minded to all the different yeah. scenes. Because um, I, I talked to a lot of, you know, my peers, your peers, and, and some of them were like, I didn't think I'd be DJing this much at my age, like at the age I'm at. Yeah. And then, we, you know, we always talk about, you know, where is this going to go? Like, is this going to continue? Right. But it's like, you, you, I feel like, do you feel like you're just getting better? And like, you're just, be, it's, you know? Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think so. As the scene has gotten younger and I'm getting older, um, experiencing all this different music and just being open-minded to all of this stuff right you know knowing the things that i've learned in the past what works and what doesn't work uh that's where the confidence came in and so i'm just not afraid to play things like mm-hmm. remember when you stepped into the scene you're like i don't know i might get you know fired for this and like you don't have that anymore uh, i don't have that anymore i'm not going to lose a room in one song so just try it Ooh. how are you at djing an hour set compared to a six hour set Oh my god, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm much better with one hour, but you are six out, but six really? hours, I'm good in I'm good in six hours. So you'd rather spend an hour set? Oh yeah, really? I, lo- I love to be on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 we're talking about like performing wise. Is it easier for you to oh set, no do an hour set set like putting that together than a six hour set? No, I like I like doing. I'm, I. I Talent book is gonna be like, all right, fuck it, we'll just throw them on for six hours. Then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, I, I, I like doing longer sets because I can control the room. Right, Why? I, like I can, I can build that room the way that I wanted to build that room. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes having openers, um, they have a different idea than I do. Yeah. Um, and I have, you know, peaks and valleys where, you know, sir, some openers will just go ham, you know, and if that's what they do that's what they do but but do you gotta, ever ask to get do you ever get asked to do one of those one hour sets yeah 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 How like do you handle it you have fun with that 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 stresses me out more than a six anxiety, hour anxiety like a motherfucker because i have to condense all of this music into an hour that that kind of defines and represents me yeah, but uh, but at the, the same time, keep the floor rocking, and at the same time, not play something that was played unique, already or be rare. Some something that someone is gonna play. Right, like I, I'd rather play last and do an hour. Let me play it last because I've heard everything, everything that everyone's played. Yeah, but if I'm like in the middle or before somebody, I'm just gonna play like almost like an opener. Yeah, because I don't want to step on anyone's toes. You don't want to burn nobody. So you're I, never really gonna hear like. An hour set of me really going off, 
I just, if I'm playing before someone. I just assume that everybody's going ham, so I'm right. just gonna just. It's like a go jump for in. Self. It's yeah. like a go for self <laughs> time, right? Yeah. yeah. I guess it's a, it's a festival time slot. Yeah, yeah that's what it is. It's Pretty just much. like they just want to see you do it, or they just want to hear you do it. But every if if you're gonna play I Spice Deli, I promise you the three DJs DJs before you did it too. So you just might as well just do it, you know, or don't. But they just want to just go ham. That's what I I hate. Like when you're like when you have something, but the DJ right before he does something similar uses the same song. You're like, I I per I actually sorry. typically don't take those gigs though because of that. It's like I take I, those gigs because I'm uncomfortable with them. So I I want okay. I want to force myself the to be better. Yeah. Yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. I get that. But I think there is um. I think there's a disconnect with some of the DJs where they think a festival set yeah. is opening mm -hmm. and it's not. And so like I, I think we recently like posted a reel where everyone's going off about like, you know, no hands or some shit like that. You uh -huh. know, like oh like the openers bur burning the, the, the headliner shit. Yeah. But I, and everyone's saying, Why are you holding back the opener? And I think people are thinking a festival set is an opening set mm. and it's not an opening set at a nightclub is completely different from a one hour festival set yeah so when Absolutely. you're doing a festival one hour lineup go off but when you're opening a nightclub Don't you have to have a little bit more knowledge oh yeah on how to build that room up and lead it to midnight and energetic and yep. i think there is that disconnect with some of these djs where they don't understand the difference but I'm even, even me myself. I'm learning to do to really handle an hour set that represents me right. properly. You know? Yeah. I mean, you have you have to learn some way. Like there, I had an opener that's a mutual friend of ours, um, and just went ham right. on me. Just but they, but ham. they're seeing it like and he was like, "How did I do?" And I was like, "That was the worst set <laughs> Wait, I've heard in a long time." And, and because you? we're boys, I'm going to tell you that you can't do that shit. You said that. You can, yeah, I did. I did. I had to. What was their reaction? You're a hater. Uh, no. no, 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 no. I was like, because I explained why. I was because like, Neil Jackson would never yell at somebody like that. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm on. I, I try to be as honest as I can because, because like they are so new to the scene right. that they uh, don't know that they don't. And I, I wouldn't do this to like a complete stranger. I'll just be like, you know, I'll, you I'll just work out. with whatever that. But he is my boy, and I want him to succeed. So I have to tell him. The I etiquette. have to tell him because if not, if it's some complete stranger that felt that bold. It might come off way different, but he knows that I'm like just trying to help him. You're coming I, from a place of love. Yeah, yeah. tough love. Like, yo, <laughs> you can't do that shit anymore. <laughs> you said that in the club? In the club? Yeah. You that? Oh. Like, right when we were switching over, I was like, look, don't ever do that shit again. I was like, you. Oh, no. Actually, what I said to him I was like, so what do I play? That's a good like, question. And, and he said, just, there's so much music. Get in your bag. Get in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Deep enough. I would have pulled that USB right out of his computer like, boop. All right. I'll just save like, the how, five songs I know you have not played. <laughs> how, how bad was it? Like, did you get really burned for like an hour straight? Or like he played bangers 10 minutes before you got Every out? song. Every song that was hot, old and new, he went for it. I don't and think I, you said hot song that's old and new because a lot of people would be like, well, that song is X amount of years old, though. Why is the headline they want to play it? But again, there's an I mean, Obama's thing. old, but that shit still goes off. Exactly. You know, everything I spice, uh, sexy red. That uh, that was all touched before I even got on. Wow. Jeez. All of it was. Lucy Vert, Just Wanna Rock. All of it was. Isn't it was in New York? It was in New York. Oof. And so What did I, what did the DJ say? Uh he was like <laughs> I actually don't know because any answer that he gave me wouldn't have been a good Sorry one. Sorry, it didn't. Been the, the easy. It, not even that. I was just like looking. I'm like, what? What do I? I'm just give me five songs and I'll just start with that. Um, he didn't say anything. I think he didn't believe me when I said it. And then I I said it the next day. I was like, dude, it was it, that was bad. That was like really bad. That's not an opening set at all. Like at all, so, I, and but I didn't. Don't get me wrong. I didn't come at him like, "Fuck you, you, you fucking suck." 
I, I told him that it was bad and I told him how to fix it, generally how to fix it in his own way. Yeah. So what was, but what it's, was your it's only because he throws parties. Uh-huh. And so he doesn't really, he never has to open for anybody. Right. He yeah. started his career throwing parties. So it's, and it took me a while to understand it. Um, that he just knows how to build the room in his way. Right. Yeah. You know, so he never had to break sets up in the opening and headlining slots. But also there's this like kind of ignorance of like not thinking of what is the DJ going to play after me. Right. Because it's just about what am I going to do for this room? Right. How am I going to kill it? How am you're I going to kill it? You're not thinking about the whole night. Right. You're thinking about the two hours or hour and a half that you're opening. How do I stand out next to this guy who's headlining already? Right, but he's never had to open. It's it's almost like imagine like an NBA game. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say that. And there was only five players playing every quarter. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, every five different players had to play every quarter. Yeah. And everyone's just going ham or going for self. Yeah. In every Not quarter. passing the yeah. ball, no fucking communication. You know, I don't know. Is that a bad, that's kind no, of a no, bad it's analogy. A, no, it's a good one because you But there's like no to... teamwork. It's not, There's no idea of the big picture of the whole game of in all the four game. quarters. Right. It's just about how many all that matters is, is what I do quarter. in this one quarter. Yep. Yeah. Fuck how the many, team. Yeah. Right. How many right. assists, right. how many Perfect points. analogy. Yeah, how many points I can get more than anybody. It's not even about winning the game. It's just like, how do I look like the MVP star even though we lose. Street ball in the NBA? Like, yeah. there's no passing. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Don't oh, yeah. You never get an assist. But, it, but it is that mentality of kind of like, you know, I remember when DMX would like perform and he, he's like, you know, I think he had the saying, like, I don't care if I'm first, I don't care if I'm last. When I get off the stage, the show is over. You know what kind of yeah. shit? Well, that's the story. And I feel like every DJ is approaching it like that. And I'm like, yep. and then, you know, I was just kind of like, yeah, that's not how. It works in a club, yeah. With it, with a night, but, but, but that goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's like we're seeing some of these guys in their development stage. That's right. That's why I'm saying, like, I, I'm not going to hold back. I'm going to tell them, like, look, you can't do this. Like, if this. you're playing no hands before midnight, to me, it's like you don't really know what to play, right? And no one's put you in your right. place. Like, even like, if I was, you even if I was opening for anybody, I don't care what kind of room it was. I would like I wouldn't even touch no hands. It wouldn't even be right. a, a thought in my head. And they're like, "Well, what you gonna play like all this like you know you're not gonna get the room up." I'm like, "Yeah, I'll get the room up, but depending on what room you're doing, you don't really need to drop no hands before midnight." Right. I don't care what the fuck room you're in. It could be a hood night. It could be a open format night. It could be any kind of night. Right. And you know, but for me, before midnight, you don't need to drop that song. Right. Because you don't know what to do with that song. It's like you're playing that song like it's just a song. Right. You're not you're not knowing that you have to set that song up at there's, the right time. Psycho- the effect of that song is Yeah, there's yeah, a psychology there's, to it. There's certain songs that just hit and unifies the room. Right. Yep. And it really unifies the room and everyone sings like if a song has like three like two to three moments where everyone's singing the words that is not a before midnight song. Or right. Open or something. That, that goes back to like even requests for like the big songs of the night. I'm like, what would you rather? I was like, look, I'm going to play this later on. Like, but you should play it now. It's going to get everybody like fucking rowdy or whatever. But I'm that. like, would you rather hear this song sober or drunk? I took your question. And then they're like, oh, well, you know, if it's drunk, it's like, you know, and they, then they understand it that like when I'm wasted and I'm hearing this song, I'm singing every word. Yeah. I might make up words. But they're singing that song. Yeah, There's yeah. a psychology to it. I was like, you don't, you don't want to hear this right now. You yeah. think you do, but you want to hear this when you're wasting. We'll get to it. Yeah, it's a long night. I'm like, yo, fam, like play the new Jack Harlow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not gonna play. Like, that. yo, that's a perfect song for 11:30, 11, 30, 11 yeah. o'clock. Yeah. Play yeah. that Damn, shit. I was hoping that shit was gonna be like late night. Like you never think, did. You think I'm? I, <laughs> you never think did like it, for my headline and said I'm like, oh my god, please don't play the Jack Harlow so I could drop that at 1:30. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that song. Yeah, that song is like, you know, like the new music that's out. That's cool. You don't play like, all that shit. I, it'll, 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 look, it'll catch a vibe. Some girls might sing for the first fucking 14, 16 bars. Yeah. After that, like, I'm. It's a problem. 
I gotta find no hands or something. I gotta find, <laughs> I gotta find no something. No hands loaded. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm better off making a version of that Jack Harlow. What is it? Loving me? What is that uh, song? I'm loving gonna, on me or yeah, loving on yeah. me. I'm better off taking that song and putting the model lyrics yep. acapella on that song, and it'll carry out longer. Like that's what I'm noticing about these songs. That's a good idea, bro. No, but I'm saying that that's the weird. I'm surprised thing. that doesn't exist. Yeah, that's but a really good sure idea. No, but what's that? What's that? Uh, JID song, Surround Sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That shit is is big, but it's not. It's kind of like if you take his lyrics out. There's a version of that with uh, with uh, Paris with the with the Watch the Throne Paris. Yeah, the Jay Z and there's a there's, a, song. there's a Jay Z Paris version where he's like, "Ball so hard, motherfuckers can't find me." And, and I'm like, and I play that version and it hits way fucking harder because people vibe out to it for 64 bars and they know every exact word yep. and Jay-Z. they're enjoying the beat. Whereas like, you don't really remember what J.I.D. saying in the first, after the 16 I, yeah, bars. I don't even know. I know the beat. I don't even know the lyrics to that song. Because honestly, the intro's great, you know, with the most deaf sample. And yep. then when it hits, you know, it's like, oh shit, like I like the song, but then it does, just doesn't carry. It hasn't, doesn't have the legs to carry. Right. You know, a lot another, of the another thirty music. seconds or forty five seconds. A lot of new music doesn't. I feel like I'm playing a lot of throwbacks now. Yeah, some of these editors they're saving the rooms, man, with some of yeah, this shit. Yeah. Song, and man. I was like, yo, like that one Paris edit. I was like, you know, I, I play the GID, and then I go into that Paris, and I see everyone screaming and singing a song, and I'm like, shh. So I gotta I do to this. Go find that. I gotta, I gotta go this. find that edit now. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah no, but I'm thinking on. like, yo, you, like motherfuckers should do this with more shit, like yeah. with more records. Like I don't know, like Rich Baby Daddy. Like I don't. Do you guys play the Drake portion? I do. Yeah, I play yeah. that. Whole I skip thing. that shit. Really? Really? I go to SZA, and it, and it just if it, it flows way better. I'm gonna try that. Mm. That's a good. Uh, shit, that's I'm good. I'm playing that whole thing. As they're they're as, like yeah. waiting for it almost. They're hungry for that. Really? shit. Really? I feel like the SZA hits way harder. I could be wrong. Do you though. play? Do you? I could be wrong though. The girl, the girls Cinderella? definitely want to hear the SZA. Part. Fam, I've had somebody like, do not cut the SZA stuff. Yeah, the SZA yeah. part out. But. Yeah, because I'd rather hear the SZA part. When she's like, do you need a beat? It's like, yo, I, and then I'm kind of like grooving. My yeah. eyebrows Drake, raised to that one. Yeah. I was like, whoa, he's going for I'm it. Going for <laughs> it. <laughs> when we, I have, go crooked? we have lost crooked right now. <laughs> nah, but, but when I hear the Drake, but when I hear the Drake part, it kind of just like kills the energy. I don't. It works for me, but you might be right, man. Nah, try. It. I'm telling you, I'm try gonna try it. that every time. I every time everyone's expecting Drake and they hear the scissor part, the girls light up. And they fucking sing it. Do you leave the Do you leave the sexy red part? I get. Of course, no. I the sexy red part is the hook. I'm gonna leave that in. No, no, her verse. (laughs) Do you get to her? Oh, the very end. Yeah, she has a. Well, that answers your question right there. (laughs) Yeah, never mind. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't even know she had a verse. Yeah, at the very end. (laughs) Yeah, just. I was in mid conversation. I was like, oh shit, she's on the song. (laughs) But it's like it's like when I hear someone play like G Easy. What is it, the Jeezy Cardi B No Limit? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then they play the Jeezy verse. You gotta get. I'm like, no. why would why why'd you? If you skip to Cardi, the girls wild out way more. Yeah, that's the one you play. That's true. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. It's it's yep. almost like unless you're opening, you're like, man, I'm gonna do two verses. I, I understand that, but if you're kind of like really trying to get it up and get the get the energy going, yeah. If you skip hey, that, yo. if you skip that Jeezy and you go to Cardi, yeah, it's like. Ultimately, they're gonna. I have an editor that just point. does that. I'm like, yeah, just the Cardi B version. Why do we? I mean, you could just like kind of just hit the Q button into the yeah. Cardi B. I, yeah, yeah. I don't even take the chance. That's no, <laughs> but <laughs> for them to hit the Q button, and I'm fucked. I'm like, oh, I'm fuck. telling you though, there's something about if 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 some of these editors take known verses and start putting it on the new songs, leave like the chorus, but like surprise motherfuckers. Yeah, I feel like some of these new songs might have a little more legs. I think you're onto Or just at least re-edit it. Yeah. I mean, it depends too because like sometimes they're ready to sing the first verse and then it jumps and they're like, oh, wait, that wasn't the verse. First verse <laughs> of what though? Of Like I'm saying some specific songs when like when people like <clears throat> start singing it or start then that's not it, a yeah. song that you change. Yeah. But yeah, there's specific songs that you yeah. know that can't even last through the first verse. Yeah. yeah like the, So you're going to tell me like no one really gives a fuck about the Jack Harlow first verse. Do you know the Love words after me? I'm Vanilla Baby? Nobody knows. It's true. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And if you hear, you know, I'm the fucking man, and you know, the, the, you hear the, the, motto, the, the, everyone's gonna be like, oh shit! And on 25, now I can groove with this shit. Yeah. They're gonna sing it. You can start taking the words out. <laughs> <laughs> and Your you still, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh shit! 
shit. shit. <laughs> Man, I haven't seen him, but I haven't seen anybody fucking catch a groove like that in a long time. Like, right? Oh, shit. But that's, that's, that, age. <laughs> that's, that, that's that uncle. Like, yeah. That's that cookout. Like, damn. That's that cookout uh, that's like, you reaction. <laughs> Can you imagine these young kids going like, oh, shit. <laughs> Yo, Crooked caught the holy soul. No. <laughs> Tastes like I do that there. shit, though. <laughs> when I hear something good in the club and the DJ does something good, I still get amped. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I could guys, be talking I to, I could be having a serious conversation <laughs> with somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be like, Yo, Jamie. You gotta. I'll be like, oh shit! <laughs> 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 Cricket does his face. He's like, oh shit! Did you see what he just did? I'm like, yeah. That's, that's He's like, cool. he would be telling me a story. How he just went to the hospital. I'm like, damn, that's fucked up. And I'm like, wait, ooh. 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 <laughs> Hold on, hold on. Almost like you gave up on things like <laughs> I give a fuck about Dog. the pressure. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, yo, that's the stage we are in hip hop, where the new songs, the beats are good, the hooks are, are good, but the verses aren't carrying it for yeah. some reason. Again, that's why mashups are back because it's it has that factor where you rather hear model lyrics on the fucking Jack Harlow. Yeah, because it's so. And the the, the crazy thing is, like, I love the JID verse. Oh, yeah. It's not even the fact that I think it's his not verse a bad is whack. verse. It's not it a bad just verse. Just in the club, it doesn't carry for yeah. some reason. Like you still, it's carry. Look. The clubs have been, become more karaoke than ever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sing I could along, be wrong. Sing along, sing along. Yeah. No, I think it's karaoke. It's literally everyone, every song you play has to be a karaoke song. A sing along song, yeah. Like that, I've, I've told people, they're like, how's the room? I'm like, it's karaoke. They're like, what do you mean? That means every fucking song has to be sing along. Yeah. Yep. It, it or there's to, a dance to it. It doesn't yeah. matter. He's like, well, what genre? I'm like, any genre. Yeah. As long sing as it's along. fucking a karaoke song that you can sing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, coming out, like, all the bookers and the managers would say, they're like, play sing-alongs, play sing-alongs, something recognizable. Yeah. The crowd's singing. Yep. So. I kept hearing that term, too, sing-along. Sing-along. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, that's why, like, you know, some of the newer songs, I mean, it's it kind of sucks because there's some good songs out there. But Potentially uh, good songs, yes. But uh, until like you know, it's deemed like singing worthy so for the whole room to be unified and sing along to it. Like yo, we have to hold on to that. That's why yeah. like a headlining, like honestly, that's the difference right now. It's like if I have a headline set and I'm opening for a headliner, I'm staying away from karaoke songs, right? To a certain degree, right. or I'm like, I'm gonna play some of this cooler shit and keep the vibe going, or keep the energy, keep it dancing. But I'm going to save them those karaoke moments yeah. so they can hit that shit. So honestly, openers, if you're opening for headliners, stay away from the karaoke songs. Stop like everyone's Make like, sure they don't know all the words. Well, every, Most of the words is good. Yeah. All the words, stay away from it. <laughs> everyone's obsessed with like the year of songs. Like yeah. as a headline to opening set. If you're bringing up the year of songs for opening and headlining oh, sets, okay. you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. More than ever now, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. If you're coming to me and being like, "There's like I just played a bunch of old shit, play some new shit, I'm going to look at them like, what the fuck are you talking about? What does that mean? Like, fam, what are you talking about? I would get really heated. If that, was, that. That, that, was the, that was the comment section off of that video. It was like, you really stressing about a song that's 13 years old? I'm like, it has nothing to do with it the time it came out or what year it dropped. You saying that just tells me everything about who you are as a DJ. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because that's the last thing I would say to anybody. Yo, that song is fucking old. Like, were you stressing? You know, like, and I'd be like, 14 years old? What gimme you Gimme about? is older than all of us. And, and that shit, and that shit is Mobama yeah. at, at how, 128. How, <laughs> how, old is, how old is Murder on the Dance Floor? Oh, that's man, true. that is a bit oh, That's what God. I'm saying. Like, yo, suck a dick. Like, what yeah. are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. like, Damn. You don't know what. <laughs> you know? That's the difference between earbuds and us. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, my God. Fam, you don't, like, we're in different rooms. So if you know we're in different rooms, don't say anything. Or, or, or share what's going on in your rooms. Mm -hmm. Cool. Educate me. But you telling me something like that tells me everything about what you know about DJing and where you are in DJing. Right. right. It's just right. like you don't know anything that's going on right now. If we are in the same rooms and you bring up years, I'm going to be like, you really don't know what the fuck's going on. Right. Seriously. No, no, that that was a crossover song too. Which one? No hands. It was a big crossover song. So yeah, like, of course. Yeah, yeah. Like they don't realize that like there's only a certain amount of crossover songs from hip hop nowadays. 
Because now it's becoming so segmented where, like, they're going up on the indie rap scene, the SoundCloud rapper scene, like, that didn't necessarily cross over into the mainstream. So, like, you're limited to those as a headliner. I mean, it, look, there's certain there's certain songs that we need to unify room. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Especially if, we, if we're going on EDM, you know, reggaeton, dembo, uh, house, dance, you know, top 40, you know, trap. You know, like yeah. you know, jiggy hip hop. The, the hits are the hits. The hits in, are the yeah. within all those genres. Undoubtable. You have to play but those. Just, no in doubt. certain rooms, there's only certain songs that can unify room, and you can like yo. Because look, as DJs, we all kind of want to go a little more left, right? And, and we always take it maybe a little further than we should. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. yep. Like that's the fun of it. Let me let me see if I can go pause. Let me go deeper and see if they they know yeah. this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if they, if we lose them. Then we could say, you know, <laughs> then we can go back to those songs and like, let me bring them back. And yeah. Like, but you have, that's your, that's your crutch. That's your emergency button. Yeah. And then someone said something really important. I think it was Kaz from Miami. He said, look, those type of songs are most effective when you hear it for the first time. No hands hearing it the second time doesn't hit as hard. Yeah. Oh, right. You know what I mean? In what, in the same night. In the same, same night. night. Right. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? So like, oh, Leo, will you play the song again? And be like, yeah, but it's not the same when you hear it the second time. Right. Yeah. You right. know? You're more like, why is this DJ playing this shit again? And it just it sounds off. It sounds like you, sh- you don't have your shit together. Well, once again, right. that's like a, a, that's a, a way for people to deflect and not be accountable for just being a bad opener. Yeah. Right. Not necessarily being a bad DJ. You're a bad opener. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I always tell them you should be headlining. One hundred percent. Like we should have switched shifts. Yeah. I would have much rather been on my couch by yeah. now. But <laughs> but since we're but here these, we are here. Since we're in these positions, <laughs> and I have to deal with your shit. You know what I'm saying? I had that. For, I had that moment for the first time not long ago. I was like, oh, this guy should have headlined. Like, I'd have been like, well, now I'm going to do your set now. Yeah. <laughs> the set you like, should have done now. Why are you playing now? Titi at 1030? <laughs> yeah. And this shit is, I'm like, thanks, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> why, why are you doing flooring? You should have been doing drywall. <laughs> yeah. You should have told me to open for your you. Your flooring is awful. <laughs> <laughs> why are you doing flooring? Yeah. Your well, they, they're better. making me start with flooring. Well, then you better start <laughs> getting good at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm doing drywall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm doing Seriously. the headlining set. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for real. I'll just like, I'm just going to do your opening set now and in the headlining yeah. slot <laughs> because I mean, that's what you left me with. Here, here's the best way I can represent it. Every time I go to San Francisco, I go to the Bay and I DJ. If, if there's an opener, the opener plays a bunch of Bay Area shit that I've never fucking heard. Right. And it goes the fuck off. Yes. And I always learn from that shit, and I take notes. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, yo, that was fucking dope. And then I'll go on, and I'll incorporate certain shit, but, you know, and I'll do what, you know. But for me to go to the Bay and have the DJ play, like, No Hands and do a Down South set and do all of this, and, the, like, I, I would think they would represent their city and yeah. like, kind of show me what's going on in a city kind of guy in an opening it. set a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But do you like, find if, do you find like like let's just say the Bay Area because the Bay Area is like very big on Bay Area music. Yeah. When when the opener's doing like Bay Area hits that that you may or may not know, and that goes off. Do you find that when it, when you do like national hits, um, it doesn't go off like like what he did, like the opener did? Well, like look, there are Bay Area songs that hit way harder, and they have more legs, and they they're older. But I would never play that kind of in a headlining set. I could, for example, like Gas Pedal, right? Mm-hmm. You could do like a whole Sage the Gemini set. Right. And it'll go the fuck off in the bay. But that represents the city. Right. And it shows me, it sets the tone of like, yo, I'm in the bay. Right. Yep. You feel me? Whereas like if I just do like, you know, if I'm opening and I'm playing like Jack Harlow and like Sexy Red, that shows me no representation of what city I'm in. Yeah. Okay. If I yeah. go to New York and someone's doing an opening set and you hear like more New York bangers, you're hearing like certain things that go off in New York or certain songs that like kind of deep dive. Like I remember I walked in and the opener was playing 112, you know, Only You, and then going into other like New York shit like uh, Change Clothes or something. And it was sexy and it was like, and to me it represented New York. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. yo, I'm in New York. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is fucking dope. And then it's kind of sets the tone for me to be like, all right, so like, this is where we're going tonight. 
I could do a bunch. Of, I could play a bunch of hits. Right. But I could I could deep dive into some New York shit. Yeah. But when you're just playing the hits that are like national hits. Yeah. It doesn't represent the city I'm in, mm-hmm. and it actually disappoints me because I'm like, damn, like. This is kind of like, you know, this is what y'all do out here? Like, if I go to Atlanta, I would assume they would be playing some Atlanta deep cuts that would I would just be like, oh, shit. Yep. This is fucking dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I go down south, wow, they're playing Rod Spinners or they're playing, like, you know, Young Jeezy, like early Young Jeezy or, like, Lil Flip or some crazy shit. Or if I'm like, yo, they going off. They're doing some. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know, like, they're playing some, like, they're playing some early cash money shit. Shit's going off or whatever. Or some Nolia you know what I'm saying? Know your bounce and it's going off. I'm just like, yo, it sets the tone for where I'm at, the city I'm in. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be hip hop. It could be just, right. you know, any type of genre that represents that, that's key to that city. That I get an idea of like, oh, okay, this is, where, this is where we're going in that city. That, that's a stellar opener. Yeah. They're showing you a blueprint. Yeah. And they're saying like, hey, you can, you can, you know, when they're going through all these genres in different pockets... They're kind of showing you, like, this is what you can do on a headliner scale. Yeah. That's a like great that. opener. A great opener thinks that way, where it's like, oh, th- these are where you can go. And it's that, I, I remember I went to, I did live, and I've, I've said this before. I did live, and Jessica Who was spinning. Shout she Jessica. was playing King Floyd Groove Me in Live, and it was going to fuck off. And then she went into some electro, and then she went into Justice, and all this sh- I was so like, I was, I didn't want to like DJ. I wanted to like listen to her more. And, and then the place had a great energy and it was killing. And I was just like, wow, like I could go almost anywhere with this shit. And it's like, you know, I thought it was one to this day, one of like the top 10 opening sets or sets I've ever heard. But she's also showing you how wide you can get. How wide. How go. wide. And just like, just yeah. kind of showing you like, yo, I, you, you could do this. You could do that. And it was amazing. Right. Yeah. I and get that. It, yeah. But it's like, you know, you have to, you know, you have to know, like, how to really, you have to know the room and you have to really know how to, how to tease it and just, like, work it. But, you know, uh, we're, we're done with this. Every, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're done with this concept. Yeah, before, before we leave in, 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 in the podcast, I want to, I want to thank you for the, for the bag of uh, coffee. Dude, nice. Absolutely. For your beans, rhymes, and life. Yes. This is a, this, this was this emerged because of your Twitch, right? Yes, it did. It was. Uh, it's actually my Why you si- my side hustle, soon to be main hustle. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, I was just trying to figure out something that I, I can like come out of the pandemic and kind of expand on, outside of you know if if my music career slows down like. You lean this on was a, this was another one of my passions was coffee. Nice. This is called Chanel. Yeah. So each roast is actually named after a song that I enjoy. So Chanel was actually a Frank Ocean song. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Peach, apricot, sweet cherry, and chocolate. Wow. Impressive. Yeah, it's for you and Mama Crooked. Yeah, yeah. So dope, man. I appreciate this. Absolutely. And Absolutely. they can get this what on the website? Yes, at brlcoffeeco.com. Amazing. Yeah. Thank I'll you. I'll let you know how it is. Yes. I think uh, Alex bought uh, some of your coffee. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. He just said it was a little expensive. He said it was yeah, really it was good. Yeah, too pricey. I mean, he said Whole Foods. Maybe, maybe it's not expensive and you're just buying shit. <laughs> 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 On that note. <laughs> On that note. Yeah, maybe the other yeah. stuff in the past has been <laughs> yeah. terrible. <laughs> Marco Penta, Neil Jackson, thanks for coming through, Neil. Thank you so much. Dude, I'm glad we, you, had, we you. got to do this, brother. Dude, thank I you. appreciate right. you guys. Thank you. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace. <laughs>